Another Keep It a Modest report now on the growing conspiracy theories about the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. If you don't know about this, you are going to be stunned. We were in Newtown last night, and a number of residents have been inundated with hateful messages, crank calls by people who believe they are part of a government and media conspiracy surrounding the shootings. Now, it's not just some internet extremists alleging these conspiracies. This is a guy named James Tracy, a tenured associate professor at Florida Atlantic University, a public school that's taxpayer funded. Now, as we told you first on Friday, Professor Tracy claims the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary did not happen as reported and may not have happened at all. Here's what he wrote originally on his personal blog, and I quote, one is left to inquire whether the Sandy Hook shooting ever took place at least in the way law enforcement authorities and the nation's news media have described. Now, as we told you Friday, normally we wouldn't dignify these types of remarks by covering them, but James Tracy is a tenured professor at a public university. And these claims by him and, and others online have begun to cause deep distress to victims' families. We invited Professor Tracy to come on the program Friday night. He declined. He gave us a statement, though, saying, quote, I apologize for any additional anguish and grief my remarks and how they have been taken out of context and misrepresented may have caused the families who've lost loved ones on December 14th. At the same time, I believe the most profound memorial we can give the children and educators who lost their lives on that day is to identify and interrogate the specific causes of their tragic and untimely demise. Now, after a report aired on Friday, Professor Tracy basically accused me on his blog of targeting him and his family. He posed it as a question, as he often does in the headline of the post, does Anderson Cooper want James Tracy and or his family members harmed? He also includes a photo of me that looks like I'm in the middle of a rant. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, actually. That's a picture of me from an interview I did with comedian Kathy Griffin on her show. So it's not even from this show. In the blog post, Tracy says that because I named him, and showed his picture on air on Friday, I must have wanted to cause him harm. Now, I can assure him and anyone else that is not the case. Like all reporters, I believe in free speech, and Professor Tracy has the right to say whatever he wants. But as a teacher at a public university, we think he should be accountable for the things he says and being willing to defend them. So about that, Tracy makes the case, if you want to call it a case, that news organizations and the government may have worked together to dupe you, the public, in order to gain support for gun control laws. He even suggests that the government may have hired trained crisis actors to aid in this ruse. At the very least, Tracy thinks the reporters botched the story by not digging deep enough, not investigating what really happened in Newtown. On his blog, he points to early reports that other suspects were arrested after the shooting, suggesting that perhaps there was more than one gunman. Now, this is a major point many of the conspiracy theories are, theorists argue. They say the reporters never followed up on who was arrested. That is not true. We know, for instance, that Chris Manfredoni, Manfredonia, whose six-year-old daughter attends Sandy Hook, was handcuffed by police the morning of the shooting. He confirmed that to us. He was on his way to the school to help make gingerbread houses with first graders when he heard popping sounds and smelled sulfur. In a chaotic situation, he ended up in handcuffs. Now, as I mentioned, Tracy isn't the only one claiming Sandy Hook might have been staged. Others say the family of Emily Parker, who passionately spoke about his daughter, this man who spoke about his daughter, you may remember he came out, spoke to reporters about his daughter who had been killed, you probably watched this speech. Well, a lot of people say he was an actor pretending to be a grieving father. In fact, the family of Emily Parker has had to take down Emily's online memorial page because they've come under attack in the comments section on the site by these conspiracy theorists. Some Sandy Hook conspiracy theorists say that Emily, in fact, didn't actually die. As proof, they point to the fact that a dress Emily wore in a family photo before the shooting is the same dress her little sister wore when the family met with President Obama after the shooting. The internet conspiracy theorists say that it's not Emily's sister at all, it is Emily herself. In a statement earlier today, Emily's father, Robbie, told us, quote, as a country, we cannot let ourselves become derailed by the preposterous claims that are being made by a tiny number of people. This time is sacred for my family and for every family affected by this horrific event. We cannot let these false claims distract us from the things that matter most to all of us. Now, it's one thing for ill-informed people to take to the Internet to voice their paranoia. There are always these kind of people. But it's another for an associate professor at a university to do it. Again, we were hoping to talk to the professor tonight. 
We asked him again yesterday if he'd come on tonight. Today, he called us back and said he couldn't come on because he teaches a class on Tuesday nights. We offered to send a satellite truck to him or to pre-tape the interview. He declined. Alex Seitzwald is a political reporter for Salon.com. He's been out in front on this reporting on the Sandy Hook conspiracy theorists. He joins me now, along with Jordan Gowie, whose sister Jessica was killed in the Aurora, Colorado theater shooting. Believe it or not, conspiracy theorists have also been making outrageous false claims about that massacre as well. Alex, one of these conspiracy videos has gotten millions of hits on YouTube, and a lot of the claims are based on initial reporting, which, as we all know, is often inaccurate. But instead of seeing it as the fog of war or just incorrect reporting early on, have you seen a theme of why people believe that the media and the government are in cahoots to hire actors and make up killings? Yeah, I spent all day today talking to scholars and academics who have studied conspiracy theories. And there's a thread here that goes back to the, the conspiracy theories all the way back to Roswell and the John Birch Society and the militia movement. And, you know, these are people who are inclined to believe that the government is out to get them anyway. Uh, the media is in cahoots with it. And they jump on events like Sandy Hook as just further confirmation uh, of these things. So basically, they, they're kind of have this confirmation bias, as psychologists call it, to look for only evidence that supports their theories and disregard anything that uh, says otherwise. And in a way, it kind of helps explain uh, what happened, it explains this tragedy. It kind of gives meaning to why all these children died. And, and Alex, you spoke to a man named Gene Rosen, uh, the man who sheltered six students fleeing from the shooting at Sandy Hook in his house. And I actually spoke to him last night. He came up to me off camera. We, we didn't, uh, we, and he was weeping because he's being harassed by people who believe he made up the entire experience, that he's some part of some, some sort of government hoax. Yeah, this is really tragic. This is a guy who just happened to be in the right place at the right time to help. He lives just down the street from the school. He heard the shooting and he found six kids on his driveway. So he took them inside, he gave them food, he called their parents and he sat with them and, and talked to them. And then he kind of became a, a very public figure in the days afterwards. He gave a lot of media appearances because he told me he wanted to highlight the bravery of these children. Uh, but now he's had his whole world turned upside down by these people. They've called him at his house. They've sent him uh, threatening emails. They've created fake Google Plus and YouTube accounts in his name. And uh, I mean, he's, he's afraid and it's, it's really outrageous. J Jordan, you say there are people actually be that you are lying about your sister's murder in, in Aurora. Correct. Exactly what Alex was saying, that uh, I was a crisis actor, that this was a government false flag operation. Um, just these aberrant thoughts about uh, how, how the government is out to pull the, the wool over our eyes, if you will, and um, mislead us to let Obama take away gun rights. And, and you say you've actually had death threats from some of them. I have received one death threat that was investigated by three, st uh, three separate state entities and the feds. Do, when you... I mean, it's one thing, you know, it's bad enough to, to be grieving the loss of your sister and your family, to, but, but to be going through, you know, attacked online and stuff and have people contact you, what is that like for you? I'm not worried about the safety of myself or my family. I'm worried about these individuals. Uh, like I said, th this is an aberrant behavior. And when you reject facts, reality, um, and, and you, with, you, you grab the, grasp to this I idea that the government is out to get you, it's a slippery slope. What's next? The helicopters that fly over your house, the medevac helicopters, the news helicopters, they're out to get you. These are the type of people that should not have their hands on weapons. These are the type of people that should not have a platform to speak. These are the people that should be seeking mental help and, and an evaluation. Alex, I mean, the other thing that's very upsetting is, is they often say, well, we're just asking questions. So, you know, I've heard this from the, from the professor and others. We're just asking questions. We don't have the facts. We're just asking these questions. I mean, that seems like, you know, uh, under that ruse, you can ask anything you want. You can say the most heinous things and say, wash your hands and say, well, look, we're just asking questions. Yeah, it's absolutely right. And it is a fine line. And, you know, we don't want to trample on, on the right to free speech. Uh, but asking questions also means asking questions of these conspiracy theories. And they just don't stand up to any kind of logic or interrogation uh, of the facts. So if they are actually asking questions, then ask why 99% of the evidence disproves what they're claiming and only this tiny little thing supports what they're trying to say. It's also so upsetting because, I mean, I interviewed family members who those videos have now popped up on some of these conspiracy videos that have been viewed millions of times. And people are saying the people that I interviewed are, are trained actors, that no grieving parent could possibly smile when recounting how beautiful their little girl is. And, and no grieving parent could appear on a camera without weeping when talking about their child. And that's just, I mean, that's just not true. I mean, I've interviewed so many people in grief and, 
And, and I mean, this is one of the interviews people have pointed to. The other one is, is another interview I did with, a, with a, a man and wife whose little daughter, Grace, was murdered. And, you know, the idea that, that grief has a certain timetable or that you have to appear a certain way and that a parent couldn't have a smile on their face when recounting their beautiful little girl. It, I mean, Jordan, it just seems, it's just so offensive, I think. It's incredibly offensive. Uh, within days uh, of, of the shooting, there were videos online just like that from Infowars and other networks out there that were stating that I was, a, I was an actor, that there's no way I could uh, deal with this the way that I had dealt with it, and that uh, my use of social media just proves. Uh, they, they were digging through even Facebook photos and, and photos I posted years prior of me with a SWAT team that I trained with showing, hey, look, this is proof that he's an actor. Look, he's really an officer. There was multiple shooters. He could have been at the theater. It's just in a complete... Uh, objection, uh, rejection of reality and facts. Many of their, their statements are completely contradictory, in fact. And, and uh, the idea that, you know, you have to look a certain way when you're grieving, I mean, th uh, I, there are parents who I interviewed on camera who cried off camera before the interview and had to steal themselves, but, but felt it was important to, to tell the story of who their child was, and they want people to know who their child was, not just how their child got killed, but how their child lived their life. And so for these people, these anonymous internet trolls and, and this professor to suddenly, you know, be suggesting, just asking questions, Alex, um, it, it's it just, I don't know, it, it's, I, I just think it's, it really, I, I know for a lot of the families in Newtown, it is, it's a, it's, it's something they, they never thought that they would have to deal with. Yeah, and another thing is that when you, you know, blame the government or whoever, you're actually removing the blame from the actual perpetrator and you're, and you're putting it on somebody else. So in this quest to, you know, speak the truth or whatever, they're, they're really doing a disservice to everyone involved. Well, Alex, I appreciate your reporting. As I said, I, I honestly didn't know about this until I read some of your stuff la or early last week, and that's when we started reporting on it as well. And Jordan, I'm so sorry that you uh, have had to deal with these people, and I, I wish you uh, continued strength and peace in, in, in the days ahead. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks for keeping them honest, Anderson. All right, we got a 360 follow-up now involved.